Have you ever looked at containers in your refrigerator? Or looked at the boxes of cereal or cookies that you may have at home? Each of them will have some numbers, followed by a couple of letters. These are measurements for mass or volume. Mass is the measure of how much matter, or stuff, something contains. Volume is the measure of liquid a container holds. Let's look at some of these measurements and where you might see them. Take a look at this cereal box. Take a look at the bottom. You can see it says 306 G. This means that the mass of the cereal is 306 grams. Grams are used to find the mass of smaller things, like books, food items, clothing, maybe even your pet lizard. If you went to a hardware store, you may see the letters KG. This stands for kilograms. 1,000 grams is equal to 1 kilogram. That would be a lot of boxes of cereal. An example of that would be if I had 1,000 paper clips, which all weighed one gram. If I combined them all together, I'd have one kilogram of paper clips. Kilograms can be used to measure the mass of larger items like furniture and cars, or even people. Now, what about the things in your refrigerator? You might have a two liter container of soda. Liters, shown by the letter L, are used to measure the volume. Huh. Volume measures the amount of liquid a container holds. Smaller containers may even be measured in millimeters and use the letters ML. Milliliters are used to measure items like shampoo or medicines. You can take a look around your bathroom or your kitchen and see all the different kinds of measurements. 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. Liters are used to measure larger volumes like soda, milk, or cleaning supplies. A new box of cereal has a mass of 300 grams. When Henry opens it, he accidentally spills 25 grams on the floor. Uh-oh. How many grams are left in the box? Well, when the cereal spills, this means that we're going to have to subtract that amount from what we started with. This gives us the equation 300 grams subtract 25. Now we can do this. Looks like we need to borrow, and we need to borrow all the way from the hundred. Well, one hundred is ten tens. So we need to borrow one of the tens to make ones, and that leaves us with two hundreds, nine tens, and ten ones. All right, that looks better. Now, ten minus five is five. Nine minus two is seven. So Henry is left with 275 grams of cereal. Your mom decided she wanted to buy new chairs for the kitchen table. And she wants you to figure out how much four chairs will weigh. Now, if each chair weighs 125 kilograms, what do you think the total weight is? Okay, great, we can do this. We know that if all the chairs weigh the same, we can use multiplication to find the answer. So, 125 kilograms multiplied by four chairs. First, we start with the ones place. Five multiplied by four is 20. We put a zero in the ones place of our answer and write a two above the two in our problem. Next, we multiply the two in the tens place by four. Two multiplied by four is eight, but we're not there yet. Now we're gonna use addition to add the eight and the two. And that makes 10. Awesome. We put a zero in the tens place of our answer and a one above the one in our problem. And the final step, the hundreds place. One multiplied by four is four. Then we add the little one to get five. Great. Now we put five in the hundreds place in our answer and that gives us 500 kilograms. Uh, mom, how are we gonna get that up the stairs? Now have a look at that scientist. He has three beakers, as shown. And when he combines them, how much will he have left in total? Ooh, that looks like fun. Let's look at how much liquid is in each of the beakers. This one has the mark at 20 millimeters. And the second also has 20 millimeters. Ah, and so does the third. Ah, I know. We can use multiplication. 
3 multiplied by 20, and that'll give us 60. He has 60 milliliters of liquid. All right, we're on fire today. Maybe we can use those 60 milliliters to put it out. All right, let's move on to the next problem. It looks like a good one. You're gonna be having a party, and it's recommended that one liter of soda should be bought for five people. If you're having 30 people over to your party, how many liters of soda should you buy? Well, let's start by grouping our 30 guests into groups of five. Looks like we have six groups. If each group of five gets one liter of soda, that means we have the multiplication problem of six groups of one. Well, six multiplied by one is six. And so we're gonna have to buy six liters of soda. Wow, look at all that measuring and math we did. We looked at mass and how it's measured in grams or kilograms. We also looked at volume or the amount of liquid which is measured in liters or milliliters. Wow, measuring in math sure is fun and super practical. You can use it every day around you. See you next time.